All right, boys and girls, good morning. I'm Dan. This is going to be Builder Basics number eight, and my plans are outdated. I'm never going to be able to finish my airplane. Sorry. So what I'm going to tell everybody now is that anybody that bought their Zenith plans, you know, any earlier than last week or their components any earlier than last week, just take all that crap and throw it in the trash because you're never going to be able to finish your plane because it doesn't work. So if you want to hear about my rant for the day, hang around. Um, a lot of discussions going on lately about plans, plans being wrong, not being right, not having the latest editions, and you know, what revisions have been made and all of that. And I've kind of aired my views on that before. I, I think it's kind of up to a point there's there's validity to that, but a lot of that I think is crap. Recently seen a couple of discussions and had one discussion in particular about layout on the plans on a certain component being wrong. Somebody did a layout, converted it to CAD, and found a gross error which they corrected. Well, after a little time had gone by, why they came back and they said, well, the coordinate system that Zenith put out for that uh, for that part was had different coordinates had two different sets of coordinates well I haven't seen those but the way I interpret that is the plans actually showed those coordinates being proper and the individual that was viewing those misinterpreted those plans so nothing wrong with the plans just CAD offered the opportunity to increase the chance for error in my opinion because instead of just taking those those dimensions laying them out drawing them out by hand and saying this is what it is and if it didn't look right why well, figure out why why it got converted to CAD and dimensions got missed so the so the drawings came out wrong and uh, so there was nothing wrong with the plans and I think that's usually the case with I um, had a discussion here with a, a CAD guy that went through that on some parts and laid out some parts and, and ruined a ruined a sheet of aluminum and he said well the, the plan dimensions were wrong and that was the fact that, and maybe that's true I don't know I've not seen those plans so I I don't know if they were drawn correctly or drawn incorrectly or what the deal is and, and it doesn't matter but we go through and we talk about the latest the latest drawings or the latest revisions to those drawings so I, I drug out my plans and got to looking and I actually pulled up revisions that I'd looked at online but I'd never bothered to print them out so a lot of the revisions I've said before, I think, are when you, when you see the first edition of a set of plans come out from Zenith, and this is just my opinion, so everybody can take it for what it's worth. And um, if you want to argue with me about it, why well, leave it in the comments section below, and we'll discuss that. Plans are drawn, or when Zenith releases those plans, or any manufacturer releases those plans, they're trying to get that product to market. So if they're they're trying to get a newer product like the 750 to market, as time goes on, you're going to see some revisions happening. I think mainly the first couple of revisions you're going to see are changes to the drawings that were missed or dimensions that were changed or something to make the, the plane better. And, and every re revision in, in theory should make the, the plane better or whatever that product is. It should be making it better as time goes on. So I think the first couple of revisions you see are maybe safety issues, maybe just manufacturing issues that, that they address and, and it's kind of like, oh, well, yeah, we should have done this to start with. So we make those changes there. To me, most of the things after that are to increase the ability to maximize profit. Basically, you want to streamline your manufacturing process as a manufacturer to be able to produce those parts faster and cheaper. So, and Zenith has done that, I believe, with, with most of their current products. So when we see these latest additions on the on things like the 750 um, and the 750 Cruiser, and to a limited extent the 750 Super Duty, why you're going to see revisions to make that plane um, the best we can make it right now to get it to market and to make it a good safe airplane. After that, all of the revisions that are made are revisions to the plans where dimensions may or may not be correct they're going to be 
um, to make them clearer to the builder as we buy a set of plans. Why, as I look through the revisions for both the 750 and my 701, I see some things that are, I consider housekeeping chores just to make the plans a little bit better and easier to understand for us as individuals. Now there are changes that are made along the way and I want to go over those in the 701 here in a minute, but there, those are made to streamline their manufacturing processes and help our understanding of that. And in so doing, I believe that a lot of the changes that Zenith has made to the both the 750 and to a limited extent the 750 Cruiser and maybe the 750, although I haven't seen any of those plans, so I'm just using on, on what I, or I'm just building on what I think to be true. As we go along, why they've streamlined that manu manufacturing process to make some of those parts interchangeable between the aircraft. That way they don't have to produce as many different parts. So they want interchangeability there too, which maximizes profit, increases productivity, and all the, all the stuff that goes along with running a successful company. And I think they've done very well at that. But do you have to have the latest set of revisions? I honestly don't think so. And I'm going to use my 701 as an example. And when I look at the 701, um, edition 1 came out on 10 of 1986, was when this plane was first produced. And edition 2 was 2 of 1987, and edition 3 was 1 of 1991. Well, I would say those first three years probably were development of that design. Um, and I think that the original design worked fine. I think it was revised to address both the European and the US market to make them marketable or the Canadian market to make them a viable product in, in the different countries rather than just having something that would pass um, certification or not certification but would pass inspection in uh, the US as opposed to Canada because there's different rules as we all know going through there. So after that I think those were made to get that aircraft out there. Um, the next edition four was the first revision was in 6 of 2001 according to my plans. So that plane was in the in the original configuration or the basic original configuration from 1991 up to 2001. So there was 10 years that that airplane was built and flown I'm assuming successfully. And there were several revisions through 2001 and 2002 and those were all edition fours and they went up to eight revisions. I suspect those were probably revisions in the layout of the plans more than anything else or as it moved into a manufactured uh, manufacturing environment why they probably streamlined that process and adjusted the plans to match the manufacturing process or balance those two to have a good safe aircraft. Um, edition 5 came out in 4 of 2003 and that edition ran through 4 of 2006 and there were six revisions there through that edition 5 and that's the set of plans that I've got. So that's the revisions that I've worked on, that's what I built my plane off of. Um, I bought this set of plans used from another individual when I registered them with Zenith as my own why I asked them then if we needed to update those plans and what I was told was well, there was a couple of things done, but nothing that was major that made any real difference. So I've operated off of those plans. That's what my plane's built off of. And I suspect it and every other plane that's been built before now probably flies just fine or will fly fine when it's done. I printed out the last two revisions for the 701, and there was one in 2006. And I won't go over all of them, but a lot of them were bookkeeping. It looks like they did change the... Um, wing configuration a little bit. There's there's quite a few changes to the wing ribs and the wing spar, well, wing spar web, spar tips, and wing ribs. So there was a lot done to the wing itself and it looks like there's small changes. I think they changed the airfoil on that just a little bit. Um, just from looking at it, I haven't cross-referenced any of this stuff because in all honesty it doesn't make any difference to me. They did things like um, 10 gallon wing tanks, bottom right diagram, uh, redrew rib channel 7v11-4k with bend towards the rear on 4 of 06. Well, it was probably built that way, but it was probably drawn wrong or backwards or whatever. But as a scratch builder, you know, I should be able to figure that out. So there's some stuff like that, a little bit on the slats. Um, what else do we have? Slats, horizontal tail bent parts, changed 40,000 to 63,000, uh, radius from 1 8 to 1 quarter inch on, that was on a 7H2-6 horizontal stabilizer part. You know, so there's some changes there, but in reality, I don't really think there's anything that is a safety issue. Changes there, nothing I think that I need to address. I'm not worrying about it. The latest additions were 
well, updates include 5th edition, 7th revision in 2008. And there's three pages of revisions here. Dates updated to updated drawings. So they changed the dates to match. Well, you know, three of you, on the three of you, 7G1, 5th edition, 7th edition was put on there to show it was the latest edition. And we go down horizontal tail rib parts, flanges cut perpendicular to the bend lines with the end geometry changed to reflect current manufactured parts. So that was a revision made to match their manufacturing process. There's nothing that was, I see, that was wrong there. And I consider all of this stuff just bookkeeping. This is just to keep things, make things easier. 7R2-1 rudder spar thickness was changed to 32 thousandths. It was probably 25 thousandths before, I would guess, and they just beefed it up a little bit. Uh, rear launcher on stiffeners, top diagram, 30, 70 millimeters corrected to 30, 50. So that was originally written in as being 20 millimeters longer. Yeah, 20 millimeters longer. Uh, rear fuselage detail. Looks like the, the plates that mount the rudder were were changed. They were probably originally the same dimensions, and they changed uh, changed one of them from 88 millimeters to 90, and then they renamed the parts from a 7F42-2 to a 2A and a and a uh, 2B. So they made a top and a bottom. They differentiated those. Two millimeters. Is that going to make my plane fly? tremendously differently. I'm not convinced it is. Uh, 7F12-2 quantity corrected from 12 to 1. I remember that. That was a, I don't remember what it was, but there was a form part. They showed 12 and it didn't take me too long to figure out that, golly, you really only needed one of those. It didn't, it seems like it was something in the, what was that? It seems like it was in the um, forward cabin area, I believe. Um, something there that wasn't, uh, they did some stuff to the landing gear. Looks like dimensions were changed just a little bit. Stop plate was removed from the drawings. Um, main gear spring wheel for it. Rubber spacer was changed to polyurethane. You know, three eighths inch polyurethane. We've known that for quite some time. That's a common thing if you pay any attention at all. On the engine, 73-2R changed 125 to 120, 25 to 47, 22 to 47. Rotax, that was Rotax oil tank brackets. I would speculate that, that Rotax changed the design of that just a little bit maybe. So it changed the dimensions of the mounting brackets. Other than that, this is stuff that, as near as I can tell, makes no difference whatsoever. Auxiliary wing tanks, upper left diagram. Channels turned around to match diagram below in 4006. Channels shown correctly, same as photo guide in top middle diagram on 7 v 11. Um, upper right diagram, bend direction removed. You know, so this is all, and that was the revisions from 2008. So we get all caught up in having the latest revisions, and yes, we want to start out with the latest revisions, but how long are you going to chase revisions? How long are you going to chase changes in your plane before you just build the damn plane and be done with it and, and you've got a flying aircraft? I'm guilty of it too. You know, my build's been an exceptionally slow build, and I'm hoping the next airplane that goes on the bench is not going to be nearly that long. But... I, I don't see any sense in getting caught up in, oh, this, you know, the world's coming to an end. I was looking at the 750 revisions, just because I was curious this morning before I started um, looking at the 750. There's been some revisions on the 750. They made, it looks like a, I won't say substantial, but they made a big change to the 750 in the third edition. And it looks like it's, it's cabin height is what the, the main change was. And it says right in the, in the revisions list on the builder's website. And if you go into builder resources, as a builder, you have access to all those revisions that they put there. So a lot of the questions that get kicked around will be answered right there on that, on that Zenith Builders resource page. And, and it shows all the revisions up to, I think it only showed up to third um, edition on the 750. But uh, it says right on there that unless you want the extra cabin height, which is a substantial change to the whole system, is you don't have to change from edition two to edition three um, drawings. So if it's something you need and something you want, that's fine. But are the plans wrong and are the, is your plane not going to fly because you don't have the latest revision? I don't think so. I think you need to build the plane and move forward. And I keep hearing about these mistakes that Zenith's made in their plans and the things that are wrong. And for the most part, I think Zenith does a really, really good job uh, compared to a lot of the other plans I see and compared to some of the other plans that I own. You know, they offer a lot of documentation. Of course, there's probably more and better documentation for the 701 than there may be for the 750 just because the 701's been around for so long. So that's evolved into what it is today. And there's still, even though the 750's been around for a while, there's going to still be some evolution to those plans and the, the processes of manufacturing them. Uh, same way with the 650. You know, it 
we started out with a 601 HD and HDS and we went to 601 XLs and now we're up to the 650 and there's there's always going to be a evolution of those those plans from the manufacturer. Zenith doesn't sponsor me. Sebastian, if you want to, you certainly can. But I'm a fan of Zenith. So a lot of times when I hear that there's mistakes in the plans, I don't see too many of them. You know, I just the stuff that I see and the stuff that I hear and, and my experience with the 701 especially is they're a very good set of plans. There's probably always room for improvement, but I don't think there's anything wrong with them. And even if dimensions are off or something's not quite as it's supposed to be, as a home builder and especially as a scratch builder or a plans builder, we have to be able to adjust to that and, and take that into account. That's part of the reason that we're able to build from from scratch or from plans is Zenith is good enough to sell us a set of plans and afford us the opportunity to build our own aircraft for the price of admission of a set of plans. So I think it's a great value. I think we need to quit complaining about what we've got and what we're not happy about and move forward because a lot of planes have been built before ours and they've been built successfully and I'm sure fly just fine. So if a dimension's not right, Everybody before us has been able to adjust to that and accommodate for it. So, there you go. Just my opinion. Just my little rant for the day. It's been one that's kind of been on my, laying on my desk on my notes for a, a few weeks here that I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So, hopefully that at least gives you something to think about. And hopefully I've helped you a little bit with your build. So, if you enjoy these videos, well, give me a thumbs up and give me some comments below. Uh, if you hit the bell notification, of course, you'll know when I put out a new video. And thanks for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it, guys.